Good morning, everyone. Uh, I was hoping a, a little larger crowd than this, but no, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Babu. So, uh, we'll be talking about uh, a lot of logical replication in Postgres, multi master replication, you know, why do we need multi master replication in Postgres, and then some of the replication uh, uh, nuances like conflict resolution and so on and so forth, right? Let's delve into this. So, why do we need logical replication? For some of the folks that know about uh, the replication uh, methodologies available in Postgres, there's physical uh, streaming replication, logical trigger based replication, which is kind of a legacy. And uh, we also have uh, some of the uh, uh, asynchronous replication technologies that are you know, uh, coming, coming into the mainstream you know, off late. Right. Uh, we require you know, the native logical replication that we are becoming uh, part and parcel of Postgres from PG-10. Right. So, uh, some of the use cases where a lot of our uh, uh, database engineers use logical replication is to achieve uh, you know, zero downtime or you know, as uh, less downtime as possible when you are doing major upgrades between uh, database versions. Right. Say, for example, you are on a, a, a non-supported uh, 9.4, right, and then you would like to uh, upgrade to uh, PG 10, 11, or you know, PG 15s or 14s, right. So, you will be able to use the native logical replication and do a, a, a major upgrade with zero downtime, right. And uh, logical replication works in publisher and subscriber model, which means so, you can have uh, publishers publishing your data sets and the data sources to uh, a ton of uh, subscribers, right. There could be more than one subscriber. Some of the use cases that uh, we have seen uh, on, on the publisher and subscriber model is you can have one of, uh, you know, setting up one of your entire uh, 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 HA system, you know, with the logical replication, right. And then you can pick and choose what tables you would want to have as part of logical replication, right. So, you could do uh, uh, your data warehousing use cases with logical replication. You could do a lot of lake houses and, you know, the uh, uh, modern data stack that, you know, uh, I was uh, talking about, right. And then uh, with replication in logical versus physical, right, it is more of the entire database or the instance versus in logical, it is database by database, right. You could pick and choose schema by schema, table by table and stuff, right. And with PG-14s and 15s, there is row level filtering. You can, you know, have a specific column to be uh, part of the publisher and then a you know, subscriber will be able to consume them, right. Under the hood, uh, it uses logical decoding. Now, uh, there are some, you know, super cool uh, low level APIs that does that uh, task, you know, uh, using the logical decoding, right. And, you know, we slowly fast forward to uh, uh, the multi master replication and then what was the history behind multi master and multi active systems that were available in, in, in Postgres ecosystem, right. Uh, we had one uh, that was based off of 9.4 and 9.6, that was the BDR1, the first and foremost. Uh, version of bidirectional replication. BDR stands for bidirectional replication, right. And uh, second quadrant and now the uh, erstwhile second quadrant and you know the EDB uh, folks have something called as uh, Postgres distributed, right. That is also one of the uh, uh, bidirectional slash multi master replication solutions available, right. And then you know after BDR1 there was BDR2 and BDR3 which were you know proprietary slash closed source ones, right. Now why are we looking at multi master, why are we looking at you know some of the uh, 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 multi active solutions, right. So we are talking about edge computing use cases a lot these days, right. So if you look at uh, some of the, uh, uh, I mean the uh, stack that we are trying to look at here, right. So we are getting the user. Uh, closer to the system, right, closer to the compute, closer to the edge uh, network, right. Uh, you have got wearables, you have got mobile devices, you have got the entire application stack on your right, right, and then these are some of the smart home systems, the IoT devices and stuff, right. 
So what, what are we trying to do? We are getting the compute, we are getting the data closer to the system, closer to the users, right? And then we are also working with a few uh, CDNs, right? You know, content data networks like, you know, Cloudflare, Fastly's, and, you know, uh, I was also talking to a couple of uh, folks from Varnish Software, right? They are here in, in, in Voss Asia. All of these guys have uh, the uh, static pages that are available and then made available on the edge. What we are missing is the data piece of it, right? Now, how do we get the database closer to these edge compute networks, right? Edge, edge cases, right? That's what, you know, we are trying to solve with uh, PG Edge, right? One of the reasons why we had also named the company as PG Edge, I would say. Right? Now, that got, uh, so what, 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 what's the uh, 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 take on Postgres, right? How do we get integrated with Postgres uh, ecosystem altogether, right? So, uh, PG Edge has got two products. One is the PG Edge platform. Uh, PG Edge platform is a completely uh, a standard Postgres and 100% open, right? If you take a look at the uh, uh, platform per se, right? Uh, it, 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 it's got uh, the uh, standard Postgres uh, engine, right? So we start supporting from PG15. Uh, if there are use cases, you know, we will be able to support PG14s also, right? The right hand side of the uh, slide is more of the standard Postgres offering, right? Now, uh, Postgres has this super awesome extensibility model, right? So we've got uh, PostG REST, uh, which which uh, works you know, more, uh, primarily on the REST uh, APIs, and then, you know, there are extensions, right, that I was talking about, right? So we have already made these 20 plus extensions available on the PG Edge platform. So you go ahead and download the binaries from pgedge.com, so you get the entire uh, uh, offering for free, right? So you'll be able to go ahead and do your development activities, right? And, 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 and get your hands dirty with uh, uh, multi-master replication, right? So one, uh, I mean, two components that are part of the platform are the node uh, control and the uh, cluster control CLIs, right? Both of these uh, uh, are the uh, uh, armory behind uh, I mean, working under the hood, you know, that is enabling the entire cluster orchestration, that is enabling the entire uh, PG Edge platform, right? And the extension, you know, uh, the extension that enables the uh, Postgres cluster to be multi-master is Spock, uh, which is the multi-active replication and uh, any multi-master replication solution, you know, uh, would require a, a super solid conflict resolution, conflict avoidance in place, right? So, Spark brings to the table the uh, multi-active and multi-master with the conflict resolution and then, you know, keeping things as simple as possible, right? So, there are uh, multiple masters writing databases, multiple sources writing and then, you know, you have uh, under the hood uh, a strong algorithms, you know, strong APIs taking care of the conflict avoidance and conflict resolutions, that's the uh, 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 power uh, that uh, Spock brings to the uh, Postgres platform, right? And uh, uh, apart from, you know, uh, uh, the uh, PGH platform, right, there is another product called as PGH which will take a look, right? But, you know, if you take a, a look at, you know, the uh, PGH developed and the Postgres community developed, these are the only two components, right? Uh, node CTL and cluster control. That's the uh, 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 intelligence behind uh, the cluster configuration and then the standard configuration that gets uh, set up as soon as you, know, you run the uh, uh, PG Edge platform, right? So, uh, the adoption or uh, from an existing PostgreSQL uh, clusters, right? Now, how do you go ahead and uh, 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 incorporate PG Edge or you know, how do you adopt Postgres uh, uh, plus the PG Edge? These are the two components that you would require, right? The entire components and you know, all of them are PG uh, or the PostgreSQL uh, community developed uh, uh, software, right? So, this is the only two components which is the Spark and the Node CTL and Cluster CTL that you would want to attach to your cluster and then you know, make that cluster you know, edge uh, uh, aware and uh, uh, multi-master and multi-active. 
right. So, uh, what PG Edge platform brings to the table, right. So, all of the features are uh, part and parcel of the fully distributed PostgreSQL, right. And then, you know, it is uh, available for you guys to go ahead and download, uh, put it on development machines, put it on your uh, production and stuff, right. And uh, we have also have enterprise uh, support uh, available, right. So, that is that's where we have our subscription based support available from PG Edge and you know uh, some of the eminent uh, Postgres contributors being part of that enterprise uh, support. Right. And you know every every product in the uh, Postgres ecosystem you know that is bringing uh, you know new functionalities, new future set uh, into the system uh, will have a licensing model, right. So, uh, what is the licensing model that we have as part of PG Edge, right. It is a community license, more of the licensing is around the uh, Confluent, right. So, just like a Kafka uh, uh, that you know which is a very good example to take, right. And uh, uh, we, we will be able to uh, you know download Spark and then you know uh, just attach this Spark uh, extension to your you know already running database, right. And uh, uh, you could you could just uh, uh, use it on production, right. There is absolutely no uh, licensing around, you know, or restrictions around, you know, using the system. And the only uh, 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 caveat or the, the only uh, catch here is none of the cloud providers will be able to package our product and then host it on their uh, cloud uh, uh, offerings like an RDS or a, a, a Azure for Postgres here, right. So that is why we had that pun, uh, sorry AWS, right. And this is the uh, cloud SaaS software that I was talking about, right. So, this is a fully managed DBAS uh, where uh, you will be able to go ahead and set up uh, on AWS and uh, uh, Azure at the moment, right. And GCP and you know uh, Google Cloud support is just around the corner, probably in a quarter or two we should be able to. Uh, 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 right, you know, get up and running on Google uh, Cloud also, right. And uh, with the uh, PG Edge, right, so uh, PG Edge platform, so you will be able to go ahead and do an on-prem installation, on-prem setup, you know, for your uh, current commodity hardware or use your cloud, use your AWS account and then, you know, hop on uh, your, you know, IAM and then, you know, uh, grab the EC2 instance and then set up the uh, PG Edge uh, platform code, right. So, it is it's, it's very easy for us to go ahead and you know incorporate and then you know set up the uh, PG Edge platform. And the access uh, uh, to both PG Edge uh, platform and PG Edge cloud, uh, PG Edge platform obviously you know you have got CLIs, you know you have got web interfaces that you can go ahead and hook it up. And then, you know, PG Edge platform also comes with uh, a super solid uh, uh, monitoring system in place, right. So, we have got Prometheus plus Grafana as one of our monitoring, uh, uh, enterprise monitoring tools that are uh, uh, incorporated and, you know, integrated with PG Edge and PG Cloud, right. So, we will be able to take a look at uh, some of the uh, PG Cloud, uh, PG Edge Cloud instance uh, demo uh, screenshots, right. So, if I summarize uh, the whole uh, PG Edge, uh, uh, you know, the whole uh, feature set or the uh, interesting facts and figures about uh, the PG Edge, right. So, we will we'll have low latency because we are closer to the user, right. The database systems are closer to the uh, user, meaning uh, you were writing to the nearest available node, right. So, you just have to have uh, your application code you not know, talking and you know being aware of what is the nearest uh, database node available in the cluster right and you know that uh, that solves a lot of your you know latency problems and then the latency issues where a plus or minus 50 to 100 milliseconds that you know we will be able to uh, uh, save right and then we are talking about millions and millions of transactions per second and then you know uh, millions and millions of transactions that are happening across right. So, that that is that's a, a pretty uh, a good trade off I will say right if you are grabbing the 50 to 100 milliseconds off of your uh, connection request time right. And then the ultra high availability model that uh, we uh, uh, I mean 
specifically call it as uh, ultra high available because you have got multi master nodes and all of the multi master nodes will have a logical replica supporting them right so a logical replica uh, around uh, uh, how do we set up a uh, 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 fallback instance right so you have got a I mean, like I spoke about the logical replication, you can set up the entire instances as a logical replica, right? And uh, you will also be able to uh, uh, set up uh, uh, your own uh, witness nodes around uh, the clouds availability and so on and so forth, right? And then the data residency is another uh, very important uh, uh, use case that we are seeing these days, right? So you want to make sure the data is residing in your own continent, in your uh, own uh, uh, ecosystem, right? So that's, that's another one where we implement uh, something called as PII enabled partitions, right? So you can have multiple partitions in place and then all of those uh, data sets could be PII enabled, right? So that's uh, already available, you know, baked into the product, baked into the PGH, uh, uh, both cloud and uh, PGH platform, right? and uh, optimized for the network edge, right? Like I mentioned about, so your data set and then your application layer are, uh, I mean, your, your application layers are, you know, uh, all of them are HTTPS and HTTPDs, right? So all of them will be able to go ahead and take a, 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 a read, write access to your nodes that are closer to the network edge, right? And uh, fully managed DBAS, right, uh, RPG cloud, so I've got uh, some of the folks uh, running the show there, uh, taking care of the uh, support uh, ecosystem there, right? And then PGH, you can uh, access it via web. You'll be able to do REST API calls. You'll be able to use the uh, DPA-friendly uh, client, I mean, interfaces, CLIs and stuff, right? PGH platform is more of the uh, uh, CLI uh, uh, product offering of it, right, which is completely open. Now, uh, the one, uh, the uh, extension that empowers the uh, whole uh, uh, edge computing and bringing about the multi-master replication into the system is this POC, right? This is an extension that, you know, you could go on the hit GitHub and see the code and stuff, right? So, this, this uh, allows you to do uh, asynchronous replication between all your master nodes, right? And uh, uh, Spock also uh, bakes in the uh, predefined monitoring, the data dictionary, the catalog, because it's it's completely based off of the uh, Postgres, uh, the data dictionary and the catalog views are already available in them, right? Like I said, you no. Know, uh, with with every multi-master replication solution, the conflict resolution and you know the error handling that has to be uh, within the system is pretty important, right? Which means uh, you are now you, are, you, have, you have got master nodes across you no know, three or five right and then all of the nodes are writing and then you know you should have uh, the conflict uh, avoidance first place and then you know if there is a conflict how do we resolve right how do we resolve those conflict right the conflict resolution model that we have available is so you could you could go ahead and use uh, the apply remote uh, the last update wins or the first update wins right so you will be able to go ahead and configure according to your data needs, right? So, like we say, understand your data, understand the problem, and then uh, look at what is the exact conflict resolution that you would want to incorporate, right? And then you know, it's a simple example of you know, how do we look at a uh, first update wins uh, conflict resolution, right? So, these are two nodes. So, we are talking about this has only one transaction, so imagine a transaction volume of around uh, uh, 12,000 know, uh, TPS, right, 12,000 transactions per second and all of these happening in a you know, uh, more streamlined and more uh, foolproof manner, right. So, we are, we are, we are looking at uh, node 1 and node 2, so uh, up until now PGH supports 5 nodes, so you will be able to set up 5 different nodes and on 5 different uh, regions on AWS and Azure. And then, you know, uh, for conflict avoidance, you know, we have not created any CRDTs. You no know, CRDTs stand for conflict-free uh, uh, replication data types, right? So, we have a simple implementation of grabbing the old value and then, you know, whatever the uh, updated value 
and you know how do we bake those you no know, two values and then you know grab the exact uh, result uh, and then you know uh, have it eventually propagated across all of the PG nodes, right? The PG edge nodes, right? And uh, the functionality that you know we have is simply making sure the table has got uh, log old value equals to true, right? Which means that whatever is the column, right? Basically, this is the primary key column that we would want to make sure that has the log underscore old underscore value. What it enables is it makes sure uh, we are having, the, it's explained in the next one. So, uh, first we will grab the old value of the column that is captured, right? And then second, uh, the transaction that is going to update the value and then, you know, uh, both of them are computed and you will get the uh, source of truth that is propagated and eventually consistent across all of the nodes. So, a, a, a typical uh, a deployment of uh, a PG edge, uh, uh, right? So, you will be able to see a lot of hub nodes available here, right? So, this, this is one uh, availability zone, right? We have got one in uh, Europe, one in the uh, Australia region, right? All of the hub nodes can have the logical replicas for a high availability standpoint, right? That's why we say ultra high availability. And you know, uh, right, right now, I said you know, uh, the AWS and uh, Azure are the ones you now we will be able to set up the servers on and uh, uh, do the deployment. This uh, now, when you hop on the pgedge.com, right, you will be able to create your own clusters and then you now see uh, how. Uh, things work out and you know how do we uh, set up multi-region uh, uh, database nodes across in PG8. So these are the UI uh, uh, screenshots that I have uh, grabbed from our uh, PG Edge uh, 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 system and uh, uh, you will be able to, uh, no, like I said you know one of the uh, important things that is already available with PG Edge is the monitoring system, right? So, you will be able to have the uh, strong uh, and, you know, uh, uh, enterprise level monitoring system available with Prometheus and Grafana, right? So, uh, that is another thing you now which is available on the PG Edge uh, cloud dashboards. Uh, you will be able to see and uh, uh, make sure uh, you have got uh, the database instances being monitored on live, right? And then the security modus operandi of PG Edge is, you know, pretty, uh, pretty much uh, the onus is on uh, the user, right? So bring your own uh, cloud accounts, and then you, know, you will be able to go ahead and take care of the uh, 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 VPC pairing. You know, uh, what do you want to do with, you know, uh, how much of cost uh, you would want to do, right? All of that stuff that you know, that uh, you know, that is associated to do a cloud uh, service provider, you, know, you will be uh, having complete control. Right? We do not want it to be resellers of you know, AWS or uh, 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 Azure. Right? So we wanted you to be having the uh, uh, pick and choice of what cloud uh, provider you would want to work with, and then you know, bring your account, and we will be able to set up those. Uh, uh, set up on those regions and uh, cloud uh, 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 infrastructure, right? And every every uh, 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 operation that you would perform on the uh, PGH cloud, so you will be able to audit, and then you will be able to go ahead and take a look at any compliance checks that you know that is part of parcel of you know, a lot of cloud pro cloud offering products. Right? And these are some of the useful links I have laid out. Uh, so. Now, uh, go ahead and you know, hop on the GitHub, uh, pgedge.com, I mean pgedge.com or you know, so there are uh, some cool blogs that are available on pgedge.com and uh, the one blog that we have written is the uh, uh, distributed PostgreSQL with Cloudflare and some of the other uh, CDNs that uh, we are you know, currently working with. That, that's, that's something you know, we are uh, pretty excited about and uh, will be working on as part of our uh, uh, next coming you know, few weeks. And if you have any questions, I am around uh, the whole day in the conference, uh, feel free to uh, write, you know, touch base with me. Any questions?
Yes. So how does the client figure out what is the nearest hub it should connect to? What's the process in that? That's a great question, Amul. So uh, they, fine. If we take an example of the Cloudflare, right? So Cloudflare has got pages, Cloudflare workers, and then you know at the end it is the database, right? So Cloudflare workers. So we are working with Cloudflare, you know, to have a specific code in place as part of workers. The workers will have uh, somewhere around uh, code inside uh, the workers, right? Which is a simple Node.js code, right? The Node.js code will be able to use the Geo library and then you know, pick up the exact uh, uh, closest node available. Yeah. That's one of the CDNs that you know, we are working with. Fastly as you know, something called as a you know, point of presence, you know, Fastly pop and all of these CDNs. Good. Have you designed some sort of a rule system for data residency so you can build the logic about what stays local, what gets replicated? Absolutely, yeah. We have it as part of, you know, there, there is a whole uh, a bunch of uh, uh, infrastructure available for you to have a PII data, right? So you can have your PII partitions, you know, specifically residing in one of your regions, right? So say, for example, the GDPR plus the EU, right? So you will be able to go ahead and see what requests are coming from the EU and then you know all those requests are routed to the EU region and stuff. Any more questions? Okay, in that case, thank you very much, Harry. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker.